is Dr. Harshad. What we're going to do today is we're going to solve the NEET 2019 paper. The version which I'm going to solve today for you all is S5. My name is Dr. Harshad Bhanushari. I am a teacher of biology. The past 17 years I've been teaching 11th and 12th NEET biology. Overall, if you ask my review of the paper, you would find that most of the questions were from NCRP. They were fact-based questions. Uh, there were questions of match the column. There were questions which were there, statement-wise question. This is something which is not surprising. It is always expected in your meet paper. There were uh, one or two questions which were from outside of NCRP. Once we reach that particular question, I will be pointing out which ones they are. Uh, there was one question which was based slightly on the information which has been given in the NCRP. You have to interpret it. Again, we will be elaborating it once we reach that particular question. But more or less, overall, if you go to see, this paper was on expected lines. Uh, once we reach the individual questions. What I will be doing is the questions will come up on the board one by one and I will be telling you which is the correct answer. And if it's a direct question, it's a straightforward question, then of course it's a straightforward answer. Otherwise, I will be explaining how a particular answer has been reached. So we will we'll start with the first question in this version. Now, if you see the question, the question says, in a species, the weight of a newborn ranges from 2 to 5 kgs. 97% of the newborn with an average of the infant's born with a weight of 2 to 2.5 kg or 4.5 to 5 kgs die. That means, if you see the question, it says that the extreme ones are dying. A part of the question has not been typed in this 2 to 5 kg. Your question says that those with 3 to 3.3 kg, such kids survive. So if you analyze this, kids having very low or very high weight die, kids with 3.3 kg weight survive. That means the median kids survive. This type of uh, selection is called as the stabilizing selection. So the answer for this question is option number four in this version, which is stabilizing selection because the mean character is being selected. This is the question of your evolution chapter, by the way. We go to the next question now. Select the correct group of biocontrol agents. Now, out of all of these, which agents are biocontrolled? Now, in this, you would find rhizobium is ruled out, it's not biocontrolled. Nostop gets ruled out, it's not a biocontrol. If you see tobacco mosaic virus, it gets ruled out, it's not a biocontrol. Uh, aphids are, in fact, not, would not be under biocontrol. Now, this is an option which completely comes under biocontrol. Trichoderma, you all know, is a fungus which is used as a biocontrol. Baculovirus is given under NPV as an example of biocontrol. And Bt is Bt crops, the bacteria which helps in forming Bt crops. So one, two, three, that is option number four. This question, one, two, three, or that is option number four, Trichoderma, Baculovirus, and Bacillus thuringiensis. This is the perfect example of biocontrol agents. So the answer for this question would be 4. We go to the next question now. Which of the following statements given below is not true about formation of annual ring? So we have to find out which is the incorrect option, which is the false option out of this. Now, activity of cambium depends on variation in climate. True. It is the reason why you have two types of wood, spring wood and autumn wood. Annual rings are not prominent in trees of temperate region here, we have got the false option. If you see the NCRT paragraph, and of course it is the fact, the annual rings are the predominant thing of temperate regions. Because in the temperate regions, you find variations in the temperature. That is the reason why you have annual rings. So, uh, I don't need to read the other four options, but we will still do. Annual ring is a combination of spring wood and autumn wood. That's true. 
differential activity of cadmium causes light and dark bands of the tissue early and late mood respectively again it's a true statement so they have told us to find out which is the correct incorrect statement so out of the four options the second option is the incorrect statement because the second option tells you that annual rings are not prominent in the temperate regions which not is not correct so the answer for this question number 93 would be option number 2 So we go to the next question now. The question what we are discussing now is question number 94. It's a question of chapter evolution as we all know. Now the question says variations caused by mutation as proposed by Hugo Debreze. Now Hugo Debreze was the guy who gave the mutation theory of evolution and he had described mutation uh, with three features. Uh, compared to what Darwin had mentioned. The three points what he talk, talked about in case of uh, mutations were that they are large, you know, he had given name called as solutations for that. Uh, they are random and they are directionless. So, three features of mutations given by Hugo de Vries is that the mutations caused by Hugo de Vries are large, random and directionless. So, for question number 94, the correct answer would be answer 4. We go to the next question now. Now, select the hormone releasing intrauterine device. So, uh, what we will be doing is we will be ruling out which devices do not release hormones. Uh, the answer of course is the first one because they are the ones which are releasing hormones. If you see Lippi is loop here, Lippi is loop is not a hormone releasing one. If you see waltz here, waltz are not IUDs, they come under diaphragms. If you see uh, Multi-load 375, in both the options you have multi-load 375, multi-load if you see the example it is a copper releasing IUD, so our answer would be LNG20 and progester cert, both of these are hormone releasing IUDs, so the answer for question number 95 would be option number 1, this would be our answer here, option number 1. Uh, this by the way is a question for the from the chapter reproductive health. We go to the next question, that's question number 96, a pretty straightforward question from the chapter biochemistry of cell. If you see biochemistry of cell, there is a, there is a table which gives you different uh, biochemicals. GLUT4 is the answer for this because GLUT4 is a protein which helps in glucose entry within the cell. So for the question 96, it's a question of biochemistry chapter, straightforward answer. GLUT4. Of course, if you see the textbook, it says GLUT4 in numericals. They have just twisted it by putting it in Romans, but answer is pretty straightforward. It is GLUT4. Uh, we go to the next question. It's a match the column. Uh, one point about the match the columns which have been asked in this paper, they did take time to solve. The reason there were you know closer matches in the options. So what we will be doing is we'll match this. Now they have asked what's a saprophyte. Now we all know saprophyte by definitions depend on decomposition of dead organic materials. Parasite on the other hand depend on living plants and materials. So we have got A2 and we've got B3. Lichen again is a symbiotic association between algae and fungi. So we've got A2, B3, C. Four, mycorrhiza, straightforward symbiotic association between fungi and plant roots, so it is D1. So the correct option according to this is option number 2. You see it is A2, A2, B3, C4 and D1. So that's option number 2. That's question number 97. We go to the next question now. That is question number 98. 
Now consider the following statements. Now they have told us to read two statements and they have told us find out about those statements whether both are true, one is false, one is true. Now the first statement says coenzymes or metal ions that is tightly bound to the enzyme protein is called as prosthetic group. Now this is a wrong statement. This is wrong because they are not tightly bound and you don't call them as prosthetic groups. So this statement is a wrong statement because they are not the ones which are called as prosthetic groups. You call them as cofactors. So this is a wrong statement. You find you call them as cofactors. You call don't call them as prosthetic groups. Prosthetic groups are organic compounds, not the metal ions. The second statement says a complete catalytic active enzyme with its bound prosthetic group is called as apoenzyme. Again, a wrong statement. The reason this is a wrong statement is because a apoenzyme is only the protein part of the enzyme, not the entire one. So this is a wrong statement too. So according to me, the answer for this would be both A and B are false. So question number 98, both A and B are false. This statement is false, this statement is false too. We go to the next question, that's question number 99. It says, following statements describe the characteristics of enzymes restriction endonuclease. Identify the correct, incorrect statement. Identify the incorrect. We have to find out which statement is not the correct one. Now, this is the question of genetics. Uh, the first statement says, the enzymes cut sugar phosphate backbone of the specific sites of each strand. We all know that's true. This is the bond which is broken. The section endonuclease always break down the sugar phosphate bond. So it's a true statement. So that's ruled out. The second option says the enzyme recognizes a specific palindromic nucleotide sequence in the DNA. Again, a true statement. You always have the example of ECOR1, which says, you know, GAATTC. The palindromes are repeated sequences uh, which are identified by the enzyme. So this is a true statement. Now, the enzyme cuts DNA molecule at the identified position within the DNA. Again, correct statement. If you know the restriction endonuclease, it's called as the restriction endonuclease because they're very, very specific. They always cut at specific sites. For example, ECOR1, I'm repeating the example, always cuts between G and A. So this is a true statement. The fourth statement, the enzyme binds DNA at a specific site and cuts only one of the two strands. Now, this is a wrong statement because the restriction endonuclease enzymes do not cut one of the strands, they actually act on both of the strands. So this is an incorrect statement. So for question number 99, the correct answer would be statement 4. This is the correct answer because this is an incorrect statement as they have told us to find out. We go to the next question. Pretty straightforward question. You all know Polyblend was uh, uh, was there as a case study in the use of plastics, and we all know that it was used in improving and making roads. So I'm not elaborate on this because it's a very straightforward question. Polyblend is used for the construction of roads. It's a it's a statement about bitumen and plastic which has been given in your NCRP as a case study. So straightforward question. The answer for hundred would be option number one. We will uh, go to the next question now. 101. Which of the following factors are responsible for the formation of concentrated urine? So, which out of the four options helps in the formation of concentrated urine? Uh, needless to say, it's a question of the chapter excretion. The, the uh, first statement says secretion of erythropoietin by juxta glomerular apparatus. Now, uh, as you all know, it is a wrong statement because erythropoietin helps in RBC formation does not help in concentrating urine. So this is a wrong statement. So this is not our answer. Hydrostatic pressure during glomerular filtration. The hydrostatic pressure during glomerular filtration helps in ultra filtration, helps in formation of urine, does not help in concentration of urine. So this is a wrong statement too. That's not our answer. Low levels of antidiuretic hormone. Uh, again, it's not our answer because if you want to concentrate urine, you want high levels of ADH, not low levels. So this is not a correct answer. 
the next option maintaining hyper osmolarity towards the inner medullary interstitium in the kidneys now that's our correct answer you all know about the mechanism which is called as counter current mechanism and if you remember and study the counter current mechanism as you go from cortex to the medulla the concentration the osmolarity of the medullary interstitial fluid increases if you go from 300 to 600 to 900 to 1200 the urine which we produce is 1200 milliosmoles per liter and the reason because as you go into the medulla the osmolarity of the fluid increases so this is our answer question number 101 the correct option is option number four it's a question of counter current mechanism concentrated urine formed because of this statement we go to the next question the shorter and the longer arms. Now, this is a question which was not an NCRT question. It is an outside question, a complete question which was not there in your NCRT. This is the question about submetacentric chromosomes. Submetacentric chromosomes, if you remember, are chromosomes in which you have unequal arms. The centromere is away from the center. Metacentric chromosome, submetacentric chromosome, acrocentric chromosome, telocentric chromosomes have been described in NCRT, but their arms have never been described in NCRT. So, the submetacentric chromosomes are the ones which have unequal arms because the centromere is away from the center. Now, so it has one short arm and it has one long arm. Now, the short arm is a petite arm. Petite is short. So, the short arm is referred as the P arm. The long arm is referred to the Q arm. So, for this question, that is question number 102, our answer would be 4, which means the P arm and the Q arm respectively. I'm repeating, it's a submetacentric chromosome. They have unequal arms and in one, there is a short arm, there is a long arm. The short arm is the petite arm, that's a P arm, and the long arm is the Q arm. So, for 102, our answer would be statement number 4. We go to the next question, that's question number 103. Which of the following is a sexually transmitted disease which is not completely curable? Again, a question which is not from your NCRT, but if you follow your reference books like Truman, you would find this question, this, this paragraph is there. Truman does describe these uh, diseases. And in Truman, there are two diseases which they have mentioned which are sick, uh, completely incurable. So, if you read Truman, there are two diseases which have been described as incurable STDs. One is AIDS, the other is genital herpes. So, the answer for this is one, statement number one, option number one. So, 103, the answer would be genital herpes. Again, point to note, this is not an NCRD question. But if you've read it, Truman, you would know the answer is genital herpes. Another disease which is incurable, again, very famous and obviously known, that is AIDS. Our next question. Uh, question number 104. Which of the following contraceptive methods do not, sorry, do involve a role of hormone? So we have been told to find out a method where there is some role of hormone which is being played. Now, if you see the first option, it says copper T. So that rules out our first option because copper T involves copper ions, not hormones. So our first option is ruled out. If you see the second option, it says pills, emergency contraceptives and barrier methods. Again, it rules out this option because barrier methods are not uh, hormonal methods. So this gets ruled out. If you see statement 3, lactational amenorrhea, lack of menses during lactation. Now, the reason why lactational amenorrhea exists because during lactation, prolactin levels are high and prolactin prevents ovulation. So this is because of prolactin hormone. Pills are hormonal, progesterone, estrogen. Emergency contraceptives, as you all know, are hormonal pills. So our correct answer for 104 would be option number 3. We can rule out option number 4 because of the presence of barrier methods here, as I've already told you before. So question number 104, which of the following contraceptive methods do involve the role of hormone? Our answer would be option number 3 because lactational amenorrhea is because of prolactin, pills and emergency contraceptives are because of progesterone estrogen hormone. So our answer for 104 would be option number 3.
Now, use of an artificial kidney during hemodialysis may result in. Now, this some people did find it confusing because they said okay artificial kidneys means the kidneys are not functioning well now what is my interpretation of this question is when you read when you do artificial dialysis there is a, a line in your reference books and it is a fact also which says that when you do dialysis you can do the excretory functions of the kidneys but hormonal functions of the kidneys cannot be replaced so when you are on a dialysis machine, your excretory functions are going on well, but your hormonal functions are not. Now, which are the hormonal functions of the kidneys? There are two important hormonal functions of the kidneys. One, which most of us know about is erythropoietin, which helps in the formation of RBC. Second is a hormone called as calcitriol which is a hormone which helps in the absorption of calcium from, it, from the uh, intestines. So, there are two hormones which are produced by our kidneys. One is erythropoietin, which helps in erythropoiesis, that is RBC formation. The second is calcitriol, which helps in the absorption of calcium from our intestine. Now, if you are using an artificial kidney, if you are doing hemodialysis, you do not have these two hormones. If you do not have these two hormones, you will have reduced absorption of calcium from the gastrointestinal tract. So this would not be, this would not be, this would be the result. And second, you will have B, reduced RBC production. And repeating, you will have C because you do not have calcitriol. You will have B because you will not have erythropoietin. So C and D are correct. So according to me, the question number 105, the answer is 1. Mind you, A and B exist because we do have, we will eliminate potassium ions, we would be throwing out nitrogen space. This is a misprint here, it should be potassium, it's a typo here. So uh, the answer would be C and D are correct. This because we lack calcitriol if you're doing dialysis. This we lack erythropoietin. So our answer for this 105 question would be both C and D are correct. That's option number one. 106. Which of the following statements is incorrect? Now, according to me, it's a very, very easy question. Conidia are exogenous. Ascopores spores are endogenous. This was there in a category of fungi which are called as ascomycetes. It's a statement in your NCRP. It's a very, very easy question according to me because it said yeast are filamentous bodies and we all know yeasts are unicellular fungus. So I don't have to elaborate on this. For 106, the statement which is incorrect is statement number 2 because yeast are not filamentous, they are unicellular. These are pretty straightforward NCRT facts. Morals are edible. Uh, Cladiceps is for LSD. It is this answer, this statement, which is an incorrect statement. So question number 106, my answer would be answer number 2, statement number 2. Pretty straightforward according to me. Yeah, now question number 107 is a question about linkage. Now, when we learn about linkage, there are two individuals which we always learn about. One was Morgan, who actually did the experiments on linkage, and the other was the student of Morgan, who actually found out the way to measure them. So, since this question is not about discovery of linkage, this question is about the measuring of linkage. So, the question number 107, your answer would be Alfred Strobelent. Alfred Strudenant was the one who was the student of Morgan who found out ways to measure it. So answer for 107, there are some students who mark this, but it's incorrect. Your answer should be 1, Alfred Strudenant. The reason he was Morgan's student, he found out the way to measure linkage. And this question is about measurement of linkage. So question number 107, our answer would be 1. We go to question 108. Which, under which of the following conditions there would be no change in the reading frame? Now, this again, if you see the question, it looks very complicated. There are some people who might have been counting this. There are some people who are thinking what to do. It's a very straightforward question if you learn your mutations and frame shift insertions. In insertions, there is a rule that addition or deletion of one nitrogen base or two nitrogen base alter the reading frame when you add or delete 
one or two nitrogen bases, you alter the reading frame. If you add or delete three or multiples of three, if you add or delete three or multiples of three nitrogen bases, the reading frame is not altered. The question says, under which of the following condition, there would be no change in the reading frame. As I told you, if you add or delete three nitrogen bases or its multiples, no change. You see this question, there is only one quick statement where three are removed. It's this. Here, there is two addition. Here, there is one addition. Here, there is one deletion. You see statement number two? Deletion of GGU means you are removing three nitrogen base. When you remove three nitrogen base, the reading frame is not altered. So, answer for 108 is statement number two. We go to the next question, that's question number 109. Which of the following statement is incorrect? First, infective constituent in the virus is protein code. First statement is an incorrect statement. As you all know that in a virus, it is the genetic material, that is the nucleic acids, DNA or RNA, which are the infective material. The protein is not the infective material. When you know the Hershey's Chase experiment, you know that the protein code is always left behind. It is the genetic material which is the infective material. So, you know, we've got our incorrect statement in the very first option. Uh, second option, I will still rule out the second options for you. Prions consist of abnormally folded proteins. As you all know, uh, prions are the abnormal, uh, are the protein molecules. Uh, Virions uh, are the RNA molecules without the proteins. Viruses are obligate parasites. Again, a pretty straightforward statement. So, for 109, uh, the first, very first statement written here that the infected constituent in the virus is a protein code. This is a wrong statement. It's the nucleic acids which are the infective constituent. 110. Which of the following pair of organelles does not contain DNA? Uh, you should know nucleus contains DNA, mitochondria contains DNA, chloroplast contains DNA. Nucleus, mitochondria and chloroplast are the ones which contain, contain DNA. So, first option does not have mitochondria. So, that's the answer again. If you see the second, it has mitochondria. So, this can't be our answer. You see third, mitochondria can't be our answer. Fourth, chloroplast can't be an answer. They have said does not contain DNA. So, this is ruled out, this is ruled out, this is ruled out. This is our answer. Lysosomes and vacuoles not contain DNA. So, 110, the answer would be statement 1. 111, which of the following methods is the most suitable method for disposal of nuclear waste? Again, in your nuclear waste paragraph of your NCRT, there is a line which says that the best the best method of dumping nuclear waste is to put it then put them in sealed containers and dig them and bury them 500 meters under the rocks of the earth's surface so there is one statement which matches that bury the waste within rocks deep below the earth's surface there was another option about under the rocks of deep ocean mind you that's not our answer it is 500 meters deep in the earth's surface so our answer would be statement number two question number 111 about nuclear waste our answer would be statement number two we go to the next question which is which one of the following is not a method of in situ so they have said not a method of in situ we have to find out which one is an ex situ method again a pretty straightforward question as you all know botanical gardens are an ex situ method of conservation so this is our answer according to me it's a very pretty straightforward question from biodiversity chapter which says which of the following is not an in situ botanical gardens are ex situ method so that is something which should be our answer We go to the next question. Which of the following ecological pyramids are generally inverted? This is a very common question as you know uh, about inverted pyramids. You have the pyramid of biomass in the sea. Uh, straightforward question. It's always generally inverted. This is the answer for inverted pyramids. Uh, many students, always, almost every student knows the answer. It's something which is 
expected to come 113 they have asked about inverted generally inverted the answer is statement number two derivative of biomass dmc the next question is about cholesterol again a very easy question about cholesterol which says the cholesterol is a yellowish uh, fluid secreted by the mother during the initial days of lactation why is it important for imparting immunity this is the reason is because it contains antibodies of iga type now instead of writing antibodies just done a slight twisting when they have written immunoglobulin a immunoglobulin a is nothing but antibodies type iga so that would be our answer for question number 114 the answer would be statement number two we go to the next question. What would be the heart rate of a person if the cardiac output is 5 liters? So we have got a question here which says that the cardiac output is 5 liters. Now if you know the uh, if you know your uh, cardiac output formula, it is heart rate into stroke volume. The formula for cardiac output is heart rate into stroke volume. Now they have said cardiac output is 5 liters, which is 5000 ml. They have given you the stroke volume. Now how do you know what is the stroke volume? They have said that during diastole there was 100 ml, after systole there was 50 ml, during the diastole the heart was full of 100 ml, after systole the heart has 50 ml that means the heart has pumped out 50 ml stroke volume is 50 ml how much is the heart rate this is what they have asked again a very simple mathematical question kindergarten math stuff you have 5000 about 50 ml your answer would be 100 beats per minute Repeating the formula of cardiac output is heart rate into stroke volume. You've already got cardiac output which is 5000 ml, 5 liters is 5000 ml. They have told you that the heart had 100 ml and after contraction it has 50 ml. That means the stroke volume is 50 ml. You can directly calculate your heart rate as 100 beats per minute. So my answer for question number 115 would be statement number 1. We go to our next question 116. In some plants, the female gamete develops into the embryo without fertilization. This phenomena is known as again a pretty straightforward question. Syngamy, you should know, is the other name for fertilization. Autogamy is a type of pollination. Parthenocarpy is fruit formation without fertilization. Parthenogenesis is our answer. 116. Our answer is parthenogenesis, which means virgin birth. The answer parthenogenesis. They have said embryo formation without fertilization. An answer would be parthenogenesis. That is statement number two. Consider the following features. Again, slightly tricky according to me. Uh, consider the following features. Uh, three statements have been given. One is organ system, level of organization. Next is bilateral symmetry. Third is true silhouette with segmentation. So they have told you which animals, which animals possess all three. Now in all options they have kept core data in the options which are there. In options there are core data which exist. First three options, but I mean all I'm talking of the first three options, you have core data which are there. If you see, they have said select the correct option uh, of animal groups which possess all the above characteristics. Now, uh, the reason this is slightly tricky is because if you see the first option, Mollusca is given in that first option and Mollusca is an unsegmented individual. It's unsegmented. So Mollusca is out. So first statement is out. If you go to the second statement, it has Mollusca too. So even second statement is out. If you go to the third statement, it doesn't have Mollusca. If you see Annelida, we all know Annelids do show some segmentation. Arthropods do show segmentation. Chordates to some extent 
also show segmentation. So there are some correlates which show segmentation too. So this is the answer according to me. Question number 113, the answer would be option number 3. I have ruled out option 1 because mollusca is unsegmented. I have ruled out option 2 because mollusca again here. I have ruled out option 4 because of mollusca here again. So the option which comes here is option number 3, annelids, arthropods and chorobates. These are the ones which have all these three statements. So for 117, our answer would be option number 3. We go to the next question that's 180. Which of the following is a commercial blood turn control lowering agent? Again, something pretty straightforward. You know that statins are used for the control of blood cholesterol. Lipases are enzymes which are used in dry cleaning. Streptokinase, if you remember, is a clock buster. Cyclosporin A is an immunosuppressive agent. Statins are used for reducing cholesterol. We have asked about that. Reducing cholesterol, 118, our answer would be statement number 4. We go to the next question, that's 119. Which of the following statement regarding mitochondria is incorrect? So, we have told us to find out the incorrect line. Inner membrane is convoluted with folding. Yes, it is. So, correct statement. Criste. Mitochondrial matrix contains a single circular DNA molecule in ribosomes. Correct. This is an NCRT line. Third, outer membrane is permeable to monomers of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Yes. A mitochondria is used for breakdown of carbohydrates, fats, as well as proteins. So, they have said monomers. So, correct. This statement. Enzymes of electron transport are embedded in the outer membrane. This is an incorrect statement because an electron transport chain, electron transport system occurs in the inner membrane of the mitochondria, not the outer membrane. So for question number 119, the correct answer would be statement 4 because of the outer membrane present here. Drug called as heroin. Heroin, if you know it, it is diacetylmorphine. If I tell you what heroin is, it is diacetylmorphine. Your answer is straightforward. Statement number 4, acetylation of morphine. Heroin is diacetylmorphine. This is our answer for question 120. Yeah, this question number 121, select the correct sequence for the transport of sperm cells in the major conductor system. Now, if you see the first statement, it says semiferestibule, it says vasa efferentia, it says epidermis, it says inguinal canal. Sperms do not move through the inguinal canal, so this is a wrong statement. You see the second statement, testes, epidermis, vas efferentia, vas urge, inguinal canal. Wrong statement. You go to the third question statement, inguinal canal. Wrong statement again. Fourth statement. Semiferestibules, retinestes, vasa efferentia, epidynamis, vas deferentia, ejaculatory duct, urethra, urethral meatus. Urethral meatus is the opening of the urethra. So, it's a straightforward question if you find inguinal canal in all three options because sperms do not move through the inguinal canal. So, one, two, three get ruled out. The only answer left is four and it's the correct sequence. Question number 121, the answer would be four. The next question. The ciliated epithelial cells are required to move particles or mucus specific in a specific direction. In humans, where are the cells present? Now, in your NCRD also, these are the only two examples which are given in ciliated epithelial. This is a question in your NCRT chapter called as structural organization in animals. In ciliated epithelium, there are only two examples given, that is bronchioles and fallopian tubes. So 122. Pretty straightforward question. Our answer would be option number two, bronchioles and fallopian tubes. Express sequence tags. This was there in your gene mapping. This was there in your human genome project. This question is from human genome project. You know that in human genome project, the way to study DNA, the way to study DNA sequence was one method which was called as express sequence tags. The other was called as sequence annotation. Express sequence tags was used to study those DNA molecules which act as 
coded molecules means it is those dna molecules which can get expressed in the form of rna so you have your option number 3 which says genes expressed as rna express sequence tag means not studying those regions which are introns studying only those regions which are exons exons are these so express sequence tag tags I'm sorry. Express sequence tags. The answer would be three genes expressed as R. Next question: Xylem translocates. Again, it's a it's a question of two three chapters. It includes mineral nutrition. It also includes plant growth. Now we again we all know xylem is responsible for transport of water and minerals. If you know mineral nutrition, you know that xylem is also involved in transport of nitrogen compounds. So you've got water, you've got minerals, and you've got nitrogen compounds as well as hormones. If you learn plant growth, you will know that several hormones which are present in the plant travel from one part to the other part. Xylem is involved in the transport. So for the answer here, the answer would be two because it says water, mineral source, organic nitrogen, which is nitrogen compounds, and hormones. So answer for 124 would be statement number two. Question number 125. Select the incorrect statement. Now. Again, a very straightforward question because the very first statement they give you is incorrect. Now we all know that inbreeding method is a method for improving the plant species. It is a method of improving the animal species. And in inbreeding, what we do is we select the ones which are fit and we cause them to mate. The reason we do that is so that we can get more homozygous individuals, so that we can get better species, so that we can get pure lines. Now the first statement itself tells you in breeding selects harmful recessive genes. So this is our wrong question. It is not. We do not select harmful recessive genes. We select the useful ones, and we we uh, we do that to increase productivity. They have told us to find out the incorrect statement. The first statement is incorrect. The second statement, third statement, and the fourth statement actually describe in in breeding correctly. This is something which is our answer. One twenty five. Our answer would be one. Now. Pinus seeds cannot germinate and establish without, without fungal association. This is because now, if you see uh, reasons for dormancy in pinus, pinus can actually have dormancy because of a hard seed coat. Also, pinus can also have a dormancy because of immature embryo. Also, so according to me, this is a slightly ambiguous question because dormancy in pinus can be because of mechanical resistance. That is your. Hard seed coat can be because of your immature embryo, but they have said pinus seed cannot establish without fungal association. Now, when you learnt about mycorrhiza, the example which is given under mycorrhiza is pinus. Under fungus, when we learn about fungus association with roots, pinus is an example under mycorrhiza. So, for that purpose, we go for this answer. It has an obligate association with mycorrhiza. So, our answer for 126 would be four. Mind you, but if you go to see, your dormancy in pinus can be because of this as well as this. But since they have Spoken about fungal association, and since NCERT mentions mycorrhiza fungus as an example, that's why our answer should be option number four for question number one twenty six. Pretty straightforward question. We all know G zero is called as the quiescent stage of cell cycle, and during that, the cell exits the cell cycle. So according to me, a straightforward question for what question number one twenty seven. The answer would be exit the cell cycle. Okay, we won the match. This is a question of Lac-Operon model. In Lac-Operon model, you had the various genes which were there. You have the I gene. Now I gene is the repressor gene. So you got A with three. Then you had three genes in order. There was Z. Y A, Z Y A, Z gene here is for beta galactosidase. So you have A matching with three. You have B that is your Z gene, 
matching with beta galactosidase. You have C, that is your A gene matching with transacetylase. You have Y gene, which will be for permease. You have Z, if you see your NCRT sequence, it is Z, Y, A with beta galactosidase, permease, and transacetylase. So our match would be A with 3, B with 1, C with transacetylase, and D with permease. So the correct answer would be statement number 1. For question number 128, the answer would be one. Okay, this is a question of genetic basis of inheritance. It's a question of incomplete dominance. Uh, Snapdragon, as you know, is an incomplete dominance example. You cross red, you cross white, you get a pink flower, and the ratio what you get is one is to two is to one. Now, in this example, they have said choose the incorrect statement. Now, what is our first option? The ratio of F2 is half red, two fourth pink, and one fourth. Though this is a misprint here, this is a misprint. It should not be half. It should be. So in the question here, we have your. It's one fourth red, two fourth pink, one fourth white. Now, if you see this ratio, it is one is to two is to one. The ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1. So it's a correct statement. This statement is a correct statement. Second, law of segregation does not apply in this experiment. This is an incorrect statement. Because if you remember, the only Mendel's law which was universally true was law of purity of gametes, which was also called as the law of segregation. They have told you to find out the incorrect statement this is an incorrect statement. So answer for question number 121, 129 would be law of segregation does not apply. This is an incorrect statement. So answer would be statement number two. Statement number three does not follow the principle of dominance. True, it does not follow dominance. It shows incomplete dominance. Four, pink color is due to incomplete dominance. True statement again. So this is an incorrect statement. So that's our answer, 129 statement. We go to the next statement question now. Question number 130. Which one of the following equipment is essentially required for growing microbes on a large scale for industrial production of enzyme? Again, a very straightforward question. You know a bioreactor. A bioreactor is used for large scale micro production. So straightforward question. 130, our answer would be statement number two. Okay, 131. A gene locus has, this is a very good question. A gene locus has two alleles. A, capital A, small a. If the frequency of the dominant allele is 0.4, so if the frequency of the dominant allele is 0.4, can you tell me how much would be the frequency of the recessive allele? The frequency of the recessive allele would be 0.6. So, when they tell you that A frequency, capital A frequency is 0.4, we can easily calculate that the small a frequency would be 0.6. Now, if you remember, we have a formula which says A square plus 2 capital A small a plus small a square. Of course, the actual formula is P square plus 2PQ plus Q square. You know, this is your Hardy Winberg equilibrium. P square plus 2PQ plus Q square. This is the actual one. So, A square would be 0.4 square. 0.4 square would be 0.16. You have read your statement. 2PQ would be 2 into 0.4 into 0.6 which would be 0.48 this is your statement and small a square which is 0.6 square which is 0.36 so your answer would be statement number one option number one 
Again, they have given you capital A frequency which is 0.4. So the small a frequency would be 0.6. Once you know this, and if you apply this formula, p square plus 2 pq plus q square, you know that the answer would be this. So statement number one would be the correct answer. If you want to, if you want to confirm, you see the total of this. If you know Hardy-Hunt-Winberg's equilibrium, it says p square plus 2 pq plus q square is equal to 1. You total this, this plus this plus this comes to 1. You have, you have 0 0.16 plus 0 0.36, this becomes 0 0.52 plus 0 0.58. The total comes to 1. So this is your answer. This is, I'm confirming this answer again. The answer becomes this, which is your statement number 1. So, a good question here, question number 131, a pretty good question with an answer 1. We go to the next question, that is question number 132. Which of the following statement is correct? Now, again, this is a question which is not from your NCRT. It's a question which is uh, an outside question according to me. One, cornea is a convex transparent layer which is highly vascular, wrong. This is a wrong statement. Cornea is avascular. You know, that is one reason why cornea can be easily transplanted because it does not have blood supply. So, question number one is a wrong statement. They have told you to find out the correct statement. So, this is a wrong statement. The second statement. Corn cornea consists of dense matrix of collagen and is the most sensitive portion of the eye. Correct statement. Collagen is found in the layer of cornea. If you see cornea, the top layer of cornea would be epithelium and beneath the epithelium is nothing but a layer of collagen. So this is true. The second statement here is also true. Cornea is the most sensitive portion of the eye. If you have learned reflexes, one of the reflexes what you have learned is corneal reflex. Slightest contact with cornea causes blinking. So, cornea is the most sensitive portion of the eye, so this is our correct statement. Let's rule out the other option. The third statement says cornea is an excellent external transparent protective proteinaceous covering of the eye body. That is not the function of the cornea. Cornea is not there for protection. So, third statement is wrong. Fourth statement says cornea consists of dense connective tissue of elastin. Cornea does not contain elastin, cornea contains collagen. So the answer for this is the second statement because it does contain collagen and it is very sensitive, it causes blinking. So 132, an answer would be statement number 2. 133, very very easy question. They have told purines found in DNA, RNA, I hope you know. Pyrimidines are different in DNA and RNA. Purines in DNA and RNA are always adenine and guanine. So 133, straightforward question according to me. The answer would be option number 4. The next question. What is the fate of the male unit discharged within the synergy? Now, as we all know, in the chapter reproduction in plants, in flowering plants, two male gametes are released by the pollen tube within the ovule through the synergy. When two male gametes are released by the pollen tube, one of the male gamete combines with the egg and the second male gamete combines with the central cell. The first male gamete helps in forming the embryo, and the second male gamete helps in forming pen, helps in forming primary endosperm nucleus. So when two male gametes are released into the ovule through the synergy, one combines with egg, second combines with the central cell. So one fuses with the egg, other fuses with synergy nucleus, wrong. One fuses with the egg, other fuses with the central cell nuclei. This is our correct answer. So for question number 134, the answer would be 2. This can't be our correct answer because it says one of them degenerate. This can't be our correct because it says all fuse with egg. So answer for question number 134 would be option number 2. We've got the match the column here. Again, uh, uh, if you follow NCRT, it's a straight, straightforward question. They have given you the, the, uh, the capacities, the cranial capacities. All of these are given in NCRT. If you see Homo habilis, Homo habilis has one of the smallest cranial capacity with 650 to 800. So A would be 3. 
If you see Homo neanderthalus, Homo neanderthalus, you know, are the largest ones with the head. So you have 1400. So you have B4. A would be 3. B would be 4. A3, B4. So we have A3, B4. Yeah, this is our option here. Option number 1. Uh, Homo erectus is 900 cc. Homo sapiens is 1350 cc. So you have a, 3, B, 4, C, Homo erectus would be 1 and D would be 2. So this is our correct answer. That's statement number 1. Question number 135, a correct answer would be statement number 3. Statement number 1. For 135, option 1 is our correct answer. So we go to the next question now. So, the next question what we are discussing now is question number 136. Again, a very straightforward question from the chapter Respiration in Plants. It's a question about glycolysis. It talks about the first step of glycolysis where glucose gets converted into glucose 6-phosphate. The step of glycolysis which they are talking of is called as phosphorylation. When glucose undergoes phosphorylation to form glucose 6-phosphate. The enzyme involved in out of this is an enzyme exokinase. So, pretty straightforward question this is. The enzyme involved in this process is hexokinase. And the next question we go to is, what triggers activation of prototoxin to active Bt toxin in Bacillus thuringiensis in Volva? Now, you've learned Bt crops, you've learned that the toxin produced by the bacteria is an inactive toxin. When it goes into the insect body, it goes into the gut of the insect and the alkaline pH of the gut converts the inactive toxin into an active toxin. So, the activation of the toxin of bacillus occurs because of the alkaline pH. So, for question number 137, the correct answer would be option number one. We go to the next question. Select the correctly written scientific names of name of mango which was first described by Carolus Linus. Now, this is a question of binomial nomenclature. You know that when Carolus Linus gave binomial nomenclature, he said there would be two parts. One would be the generic name, the other would be specific name. And in the end, there would be the name of the scientist that is called a citation. So, if you follow that rule, your answer would be statement number four, option number four, Magnifera Indica Lin. This was the correct answer. So, for question number 138, the correct answer would be option four. We go to question number 139. This is a question of skeleton. Now, in skeleton, you know that we have learned about three different types of ribs. You have first seven pairs which are called as true ribs. The set eight, nine, ten, ten, that is the next three pairs, are called as false ribs. And the last two, that is 11, 10, 12, are called as the floating ribs. True ribs go from the vertebral column up to the sternum. So they are called as vertebrosternal ribs. Now, these vertebrosternal ribs can also be called as vertebro, yeah, true ribs. So you have your vertebro seven sternal seven pairs of ribs. Then 8, 9, 10 go to the cartilage of the seventh rib. So they are called as vertebrochondral ribs. You have three pairs of vertebrochondral, that is 8, 9 and 10. The 11th and the 12th pair of ribs are called as floating ribs because they start from the vertebral column but they don't reach up to the sternum. So they are the vertebral ribs. So three types of ribs, first seven pairs are vertebrosternal ribs, 8, 9, 10th are called as vertebrochondral ribs, also called as false ribs, 11th and 12th are called as floating ribs or vertebral ribs. That is your option number 2. So question number 139, the correct answer would be option number 2. Question 4, here is a formula what you have already solved. You know that EC, that is your expiratory capacity, expiratory capacity is calculated by adding your tidal volume to your expiratory reserve volume. When you take a normal breath, 
it's called as tidal volume when you give out normal breath it's called as tidal volume when you give out extra air by forceful expiration is called as expiratory reserve volume the total is called as expiratory capacity so they have asked you to calculate expiratory capacity the formula for expiratory capacity is tidal volume plus expiratory reserve volume which means it is 500 plus 1000 so it's a total of 1500 ml so the answer for question number 140 would be option number 3 now, this is your question on your Montreal. Oh, this is the Earth Summit question. Now, the Earth Summit question, which was there, is a question of biodiversity. Now, it was there basically for improving the conservation of biodiversity. So, it's an Earth Summit question. The answer for that is conservation of biodiversity. Again, a pretty straightforward question from the chapter Biodiversity. Okay, we go to question number 142, which tells you about which statement is not correct so we have to find out the incorrect statement out of the first or out of the four options the first option says lysosomes are membrane bound structures correct second option says lysosomes are formed by the process of packaging in the endoplasmic reticulum yeah here is the false statement because if you remember lysosomes are not formed by packaging in endoplasmic reticulum lysosomes are formed by the process of packaging in the golgi complex so this is your incorrect statement so for question number 142 your answer would be 2 the other three statements are correct there are a lot of hydrolytic there are around 40 different types of hydrolytic enzymes and they are normally inactive they become active when the pH is acidic so this statement is correct this statement is correct statement 2 is our answer because it's an incorrect statement you should have Golgi complex not endoplasmic reticulum so for 142, our answer will be option number 2. Question number 143, which of the following features of genetic code does allow bacteria to produce human insulin by recombinant DNA technology? What we do in recombinant DNA technology is we transfer the human gene into bacteria and the bacteria produces insulin. What does it prove? That human gene can also work in a bacteria. What does it tell you? That the genetic code which is found in humans also works in bacteria. So, the genetic code is nearly universal. So, for question number 143, the genetic code feature which helps us to produce insulin with bacteria is that the genetic code is nearly universal. The next question. The concept of omnis cellulae cellulae was first proposed by. Now, if you remember, the guys like Schwann and Schleden didn't talk about this. Schwann and Schleden said that cells arise spontaneously. The guy who spoke about omniscellular cellulae. What does omniscellular cellulae mean? It means all cells arise from pre-existing cells. Cells arise from pre-existing cells. All cells from pre-existing cells. Rudolf Virchow was the guy who gave us this concept. It is an NCRT line. It's also there in NCRT in the chapter organization of cells. So for 144, the answer is statement number 3. It talks about all cells come from pre-existing cells. And this guy, Rudolf Virchow, gave us this statement. So answer for 144 is 3. 145. Select the incorrect statement from the following. Now, in this question, it's a question about sex determination. Now, if you remember in sex determination, we know that in case of grasshoppers, males have X0. In case of humans, males have XY. In birds, females have heterogenesis. You know, there is Z, 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 W as an example which is given. So in birds, it is the female gamete which is the heterogamic. It is a female bird which is the heterogametic partner. So it is the female gamete which determines the sex of the offspring. Whereas if you see the first option, it says the do in domestic fowls, that is birds, the sex of the progeny, progeny depends on the type of the sperm rather than egg. They have told you to find the incorrect statement. This is your incorrect statement because fowls, that is birds, the, the egg decides the sex of the progeny because birds 
the female is the heterogametic partner. Uh, partner. So in question number 145, this is a straightforward question. This is a pretty straightforward answer. This is correct. X chromosome is shorter than Y. This is correct. Drosophila is heterogametic in males. Male Drosophila is heterogametic rather. This is correct. As I told you, grasshoppers have X0 in males. So this is the incorrect statement because in birds, females are heterogametic. Placentation in which ovules develop on the inner wall of the ovary or in the peripheral part. Now again, this is an NCRT line. You have this type of placentation which is as given in the NCRT line that if it is in the peripheral part or if it is in one inner wall of the ovary, you call this placentation as parietal placentation. So the answer for 146 according to me is a pretty straightforward question. The answer is 1. Okay, we've got to match the column as I told you. There are a lot of match the columns in this paper. It kind of slows you down when you're solving. Uh, in question number 147, uh, this is your microbes chapter. They have told you to match. So lactobacillus, uh, again, you know lactobacillus is responsible for giving you curd. So you have A, 3, Saccharomyces gives you bread. So you have B, uh, uh, 4, you have Aspergillus niger, which gives you citric acid. So you have C, 3, and Acetobacter acetai gives you acetic acid. So you have B, 4. So A would be 2, B would be 4, C would be 3, and D would be 5. With that, you know, if you match it, I've directly done the matching here for the paper. So you will have option number 4, yeah. So option number 4, A2, B4, C3, and D5. So answer would be option number 4 for question number 147. Straightforward, but no. Concavalent A. Now, if you know this, again, this is given uh, in your biochemistry. It is uh, lectin. Again, a straightforward question. This is a biochemistry chapter. This comes under, you know, secondary metabolites as a paragraph in your biochemistry chapter. So this one, uh, one kind of A, it's a lectin, so 148 answer would be 1. 149. It takes very long time for the pineapple plants to produce flowers, which is the combination of hormones which can be artificially given to induce flowering. Now, if you see your NCRT, the only two hormones which talk about flowering in pineapples is auxins and ethylene. Auxins and ethylene are two hormones which help in artificial flowering in pineapples. So you have an option number three which gives you auxin and ethylene. So for question number 149, the answer would be three. They talk about pineapple artificial flowering, straightforward answer of auxin and ethylene, option three. Floral ingenosperms, what does it lack? Now, uh, again straightforward, you know that sieve tubes and companion cells are advanced features of phloem. And if they are advanced features of phloem, you would find them only in angiosperms. Gymnosperms do not have sieve tubes, they also would lack companion cells. So for 150, our answer would be option number 2. The phloem in gymnosperms, it lacks sieve tubes, it also lacks companion cells. So our answer would be option 2. We go to the next question, question number 151. Which of the following is true for golden rice? Now, golden rice uh, is, is a paragraph which is there in biofortification. It's also a part of genetics. Golden rice, as you know, that is a rice which is rich in vitamin A. Now, it's called as golden rice because of the yellow tinge. Now, the yellow tinge option is there in this option too, but that's not your correct answer because it says it is from rice. Golden rice is a rice which is rich in beta carotene. The yellowish tinge is because of beta carotene. Now, where do you get, okay, beta carotene, by the way, would help you form vitamin A. So, golden rice is very, very beneficial in curing, in, in preventing rather, uh, your light blindness. Now, golden rice has one gene which is taken from soil bacteria. The second gene for golden rice is taken from daffodils. So, here is your option 3 which matches that. Now, this is not an NCRT question. 
because in NCRT golden rice is mentioned but where do you get the genes from is not mentioned so this is our correct answer it is a vitamin A enriched G rice with a gene from daffodil so if you want to find out which is the correct answer this this part was enough if you know what golden rice is this part is enough it is rich in vitamin A where do you get the gene from two genes are obtained from, for golden rice one is obtained from a soil bacteria the second gene is from daffodil so for 151 our correct answer is answer number three is option number three one for 52 what is the site for perception of photo period necessary for induction of cloud hanging plants now if you talk of photo periodism for photo periodism the for correct photo period is detected by leaves you know, so the answer for your would be leaves. If it is vernalization, the answer would be shoot apex. But since they have talked about photo period, the answer is leaves. So for question number 152, your correct answer would be option number two. 153. What is the genetic disorder in which an individual has an overall masculine development, gynecomastia, and steroid? So this is your inheritance chapter about sexual chromosomal disorders. Now, since it's masculine, that means Y chromosome is also there. Gynecomastia means XX is also there. So your answer would be XXY, and the disease which has XXY is Klinefelter syndrome. So your answer for 153 is option number 4, which is Klinefelter syndrome. Now, 154. Extrusion of the second polar body from the egg nucleus. Now, when you learn about fertilization, you learn that there is polar body first which is formed before fertilization. The second polar body is formed when the ovum completes meiosis too. And that occurs when the sperm entry occurs. So second polar body formation means after entry of sperm. Now, so this is ruled out. This is ruled out after entry of sperm before fertilization. This is your answer. Option number three is our answer because your second polar body occurs when the sperm enters into the ovum. So question number 154, pretty straightforward question according to me. The answer would be 3. 155. Now, thiobacillus is a sulfur bacillus. Now, this sulfur bacillus, thiobacillus, as an NCRT example, is given in your mineral nutrition chapter in denitrification. So, if you if you read your NCRT properly, this is a straightforward question because thiobacillus, along with clostridium, if I am not wrong, is the answer which is being given in denitrification. So, uh, uh, not clostridium, it's pseudomonas. So, thiobacillus along with pseudomonas is given in your NCRT for denitrification. So, they have asked you about uh, thiobacillus. The answer would be denitrification. Mind you, uh, this would have been the correct option if fix fixation wouldn't have been there. Since fixation has been there, we can't mark this. Uh, if nutrition is there, probably yes. But pretty straightforward thiobacillus along with pseudomonas are uh, bacteria helping in denitrification. Next, which part of the brain is responsible for thermoregulation? Again, according to me, a pretty straightforward question. We all know hypothalamus is the thermostat of your body. Hypothalamus is the one which helps in regulating our body temperature. So straightforward question 156, your answer would be option number 4. Again, straightforward question according to me. It starts always with G1, then goes to S, then G2, then M. This option is ruled out because S is ahead. This option is ruled out because S is behind. This is ruled out. S is always between G1 and G2. S is between G1 and G2. So the correct answer for 157 is option number 2. Next, which of the following statements regarding post-fertilization development in flowering plants is incorrect. So they have told you to find out the incorrect statement here. Central cell develops into endosperm, correct. Ovules develop into embryo sac, wrong. Ovules do not develop into embryo sac, ovules develop into seeds, wrong statement. So you got your answer. We still read the third statement. Ovary develops into fruit, correct. Zygote develops into embryo, correct. So they have told you to find out 
the incorrect statement. This is an incorrect statement because ovules develop into seeds. 159. How does steroid hormone influence cellular activities? Now, if you remember, when you learn about mechanism of hormone action, it is told that non-steroid hormones don't enter the cell. They act on the cell surface. Whereas steroidal hormones enter into the cell and they bind to the genome receptors. So, steroid hormones will act on your cell by binding to the receptors of the genome. So, binding to the DNA and forming a gene hormone complex. That is your answer. Question number 159, your correct answer would be option 4 because it's steroid hormones, they always enter and act on your DNA, on your gene. 160. DNA precipitation out of a mixture of biomolecules can be achieved by treatment with now you know this is a question which is isolation of genetic material in isolation of genetic material in your NCRT there is a diagram about the you know DNA test tube spooling and all if you want to precipitate the DNA you precipitate the DNA after you use various enzymes you precipitate the DNA by using chilled ethanol so straightforward NCRT question 160 your answer would be Four, statement number four, option number four, gene ethanol. 161. Identify the cells whose secretion protects the lining of the gastrointestinal tract from various enzymes. How is your gastrointestinal tract protected? It's protected by mucus. Which cells produce mucus? Goblet cells. Your option of goblet cells is here. So question number 161. Mucus is produced by goblet cells. So goblet cells protect the line. So 161, our answer would be statement 4, option 4. 162, match the column again. Not difficult, hormones with disorders. Insulin, the disorder, diabetes mellitus. Thyroxin, the disorder, goita. Corticoids, adrenal gland, Addison's disease. Growth hormone is your pituitary disorder, acromegaly. So you have A with 5, you have B with 4, A5, B4, yeah, you have got this option. Option number 1. So for 162, our correct answer would be option number 1. Next question. Identify the correct pair representing the causative agent of typhoid fever and the confirmatory test of typhoid. Now, straightforward question. The typhoid bacteria is caused by salmonella, the typhoid disease is caused by a bacteria called a salmonella typhi. And how do you test it? By a test called as the Vidal test. So you have salmonella typhi, you have the Vidal test. So option number two for 163, your answer would be option two. 164. This is your outside question. This was not expected. They have asked you about the centimorgan. Now centimorgan is basically nothing but a map unit. Now this is used in genetic maps to find out the distance of your uh, linked genes. Now this is a completely out of the blue question. Not expected to be asked. Since it is a centimorgan, centimorgan map unit question. Now the map unit formula, the map unit formula is this. It is a unit of distance between two expressed genes representing 100% crossover, 100% Mendelian crossover. So your answer for question number 164, it's a question about map unit. Centimorgan is basically the other name for map unit and MP and the answer for this is statement number 4. Which of the following is a muscular disorder which is inherited? Straightforward question. You know that Duchenne muscular dystrophy is a genetic disorder. Muscular dystrophy is here is in your option. This is an autoimmune disease. This is caused by poisoning. This is caused because of hormone, hormone calcium disorder. This is muscular dystrophy. It's a genetic disorder caused because of a defective gene. So your answer for 165 is option number 4. Match the closet again. Match the following organisms with their respective characteristics. Now, pili is snail, mollusca. Mollusca have a tongue called as radula. 
resting tongue. So for A, you have three. A bombyx mori is an insect. It's simple, uh, it, it, it will come under malphigian tubules. It will come under malphigian tubules. Pleurobrachia would have complex. This would come under complex. You know, this comes under tenophora. Uh, tinea would have flame cells. Tinea would be your platyhelminthes, so this would be your flame cells. So A would be 3, B would be 4, C would be 2, and D would be 1. So B1, now that option I've already matched here, it's option number 4. It's option number 4. A3, B4, C2, and D1. So option number 4. For question number 166, the answer. For question number 166, the answer would be option number 4. 167. Persistent useless in the egg is no, in the seed is known. Again, a straightforward question. After the process of fertilization, when ovule becomes the seed, the nucellus, if it is left over, it is called as perisperm. This is the seed coat. Highland, you know, is the junction. Chalaza is the base. The nucellus, which is persistent, is called as perisperm. So for question number 167, the answer would be option 4. Question number 168. Which of the following can be used as a biocontrol agent in the trichoderma uh, in, in the treatment of plant disease? Trichoderma, uh, as I was saying, is already asked before in the previous question. It's like kind of a repeat question. They have asked about biocontrol. You know, trichoderma is a fungus which is used in the biocontrol of plant diseases. So answer would be 3. This is your answer for 168. Answer would be 3. If you know the previous question about biocontrol agents, this is a straightforward answer. Answer 3. Question number 169. Grass leaves curl inwards during very dry weather. Select the most appropriate reason from the following. Now, again, if you do your anatomy of plants chapter, you know when they have taught leaf structure, on the upper surface of the leaf, there are certain cells called as bulliform cells in grasses. On the upper surface of the leaf, there are cells called as bulliform cells, which are turgid, so the leaf remains straight. When cells lose water, when these cells lose water, they become flaccid and the leaves curl. Leaves curl during dry weather because of bulliform cells becoming flaccid. So question number 169, grass leaves curling, answer is flaccidity of the bulliform cells. 170, which of the following immune responses is responsible for the rejection of the kidney tra kidney graft? Any transplant, if it is taken, the rejection occurs because of activity of T cells. T cells which reject any transplant is a which response? It is a cell mediated immune response. So when you learn about immune responses, you know that cell mediated immune response is because of T cells. Rejection of graft, graft means a uh, transplanted organ. Rejection of the graft is because of T cells. So our answer for 170 would be option number two. 171. Which of the following protocols did aim for reducing emission of chlorofluorocarbons into the atmosphere? Again, uh, you have your Montreal protocol which was for reduction of CFC gases. So, straightforward question, you learned about ozone depletion. In ozone depletion, it was Montreal protocol which was for reducing CFC emissions. Match the column again. Okay. Question number 172. Match the following structures with their respective location in the organs. Now, if you have crypts of lubricant, crypts of lubricant or, or structures which are found in your small intestine, it's an easy question, NCRP based. Crypts of lubricant was the, are there in your small intestine. Glycine's capsule is there in your liver. Uh, you know, the hexagonal regions are covered by glycine's capsule. Islets of Langerhans, easiest part, found in pancreas and brothers land are found in the duodenum. So you have A, 3, B, 4, C, 1 and D, 2. That would be option number 1. So that's question number 172. The next question, 
173. Which of the following is the most important cause for animals and plants being driven to extinction? Again, when you learn loss of biodiversity, these factors have been given as loss of biodiversity, but the most important cause of loss of biodiversity is habitat loss and fragmentation. So they have asked you which is the most important cause for animal and plants being driven to extinction. If you see loss of biodiversity in your NCRP, the most important factor which has been mentioned is option number three, habitat loss and fragmentation. So answer for question number 173 would option would be option C. Question number 174. Due to an increased airborne allergens and pollutants, many people in urban areas are suffering from respiratory disorder causing wheezing. Now, when you get wheezing, wheezing is because of asthma. And following your NCRT concept, wheezing is because of asthma. And asthma involves inflammation of bronchioles. So, if you have your option here, you have your inflammation of bronchioles. In your NCRT, breathing and exchange of gases chapter, if you go to the end of the chapter, you have disorders. In asthma, they have written wheezing because of inflammation of bronchi and bronchioles. So for question number 174, our answer will be option number 4. It's a question on asthma. 175. From evolutionary point of view, retention of the female gametophyte with developing young embryo on the parent sporophyte for some time is first observed in now, this means gametophyte is dependent on sporophyte. Now, gametophyte dependent on sporophyte should be gymnosperms. Because before gymnosperms, the gametophyte is independent. Here they say the female gametophyte with the embryo is dependent on the parent sporophyte. That means they are talking of the seed, embryo within the seed. Female gametophyte with the developing young embryo on the parent sporophyte. So they are talking of the seed formation. They are talking of the young seed here. So this would be the answer should be gymnosperms. For question number 175, gametophyte dominant on sporophyte, the answer should be gymnosperms. Uh, I'm sorry, gametophyte dependent on sporophyte, the answer should be in response. Next question, which of the following pairs of genes is mainly responsible for, uh, uh, again it's a misprint, it should be, it's a typo error, which of the following pairs of gases, which of the following pairs of gases, not genes, it's a misprint, Which of the following pairs of gases are mainly responsible for greenhouse effect? Now, when you learn about greenhouse effects in your NCRT, two examples of gases have been given maximum focus on is carbon dioxide and methane. So your answer for this would be carbon dioxide and methane. It should be gases here. Which of the following pairs of gases are mainly responsible for greenhouse effect? The answer would be carbon dioxide and methane. You go to the next question, question number one. 77. Again, a straightforward question talks about sugar movement in fluid. Chapter transport in plants, when they talk about transport of food, it says that in the fluid, the food moves from source to sink. And this source to sink movement is bidirectional. So, question number 177, straightforward question, answer would be. Option number two in phloem, the movement of the food is bidirectional. From source to sink, bidirectional. Match the column. One, hopefully the last one. Question number 178. Match the column. Here it's an ECG question. Uh, easy question, accepting one of the facts, but otherwise it's an easy question. P wave occurs because of occurs uh, during contraction of the atria. Contraction of the atria. So depolarization of atria. So you have A4. Now there is an option of A4. QRS is during ventricular contraction. So depolarization of ventricle. So you've got B1. T wave occurs during ventricular relaxation. So ventricular repolarization. 
so C would be 2 and T wave slowing down, T wave reducing down is because of coronary ischemia which is lack of blood flow so P wave that is A would be 4, B would be 1, C would be 2 and D would be 3 so that comes to an answer of option number 3 so for 178 our correct match is option number 3 RQ Tripalmitin is a fatty acid which has been given in your NCRT it has an RQ of less than 1 the answer is 0.7. Again, a straightforward question. If you learned your NCRT, tripalmitin is the only example which has been given uh, amongst the fatty acids. The answer would be 0.7. So for 179, our answer would be option 4. And the last final question, which is a question on the cockroach digestive system. Select the correct sequence of organs in the elementary canal of cockroach starting from mouth now here they have said to start from the mouth now uh, if you know the sequence in the sequence you will have the pharynx the esophagus you have the crop and the crops then from crop you get the gizzard so after crop is gizzard now in this option gizzard is given first so it is ruled out in this ileum is given before crop ruled out this is the option Pharynx, esophagus, crop, gizzard, ileum, colon, rectum. This is your correct option. Fourth option is ruled out because it gives gizzard before crop. There is uh, pharynx, the esophagus, crop, gizzard, then you have your ileum, colon, and rectum. So the correct option according to this is pharynx, esophagus, crop, gizzard, ileum, colon, rectum. So for question number 180, our final our question, the correct answer would be option number 3. So kids, this basically is the entire uh, paper which has been solved for you. Uh, as I already told you, Compared to other bio papers which have come across in previous neat paper, since the number of maxilla columns are uh, more, uh, we could say that some people must have taken a longer time to solve it. But overall, the paper standard, the paper quality was good enough, excepting as I told you, you had one or two questions which are completely random and out of NCRT. But that's what is always the norm. You always have a few questions which are not from NCRT, they are completely out of the box. Uh, so that's basically how the paper has been solved. Uh, my name is Dr. Harshal Bhanushali again. Uh, do give your feedback and comments on the paper here. Thank you very much. All the best for your neat results.